Hey guys, Derek here, and today we're going to go through how fitness does not end with menopause. So we're going to go through menopause, how it works, how it affects uh, women, and what you can do to deal with it and work with it and work around it and work through it. Uh, many of my clients who come into the studio, 80%, uh, 85% of my client base is, is female. Uh, majority of them are in their late 30s to mid 50s, and some of them have or are going through menopause and it can be a real challenge with hormones going crazy uh, weight gain and it, it it's almost like it doesn't matter what we do it's it's extremely difficult to take the weight off okay so we're gonna go through some of the stuff that we go through in-house and hopefully shed some light on this okay so here we go first things you got survive the change so normally Menopause occurs during the 40s and 50s, although I do have a good friend of mine who she went through early menopause in her late 20s, which was uh, an anomaly, obviously, and um, <clears throat> doesn't happen in the norm, okay? So 40s and 50s is usually when it happens. So what happens is your hormones really fall out of whack, and uh, estrogen is one of those hormones. The production of estrogen drastically slows down, and what this does is it leads to bone loss. Um, can, it can... Uh, result in osteoporosis and weight gain. Um, from what we can tell, estrogen determines where the body fat is distributed. So many women gain weight around their stomach, which leads to that apple shape, which uh, is ex extremely difficult to take off and um, is very high risk for conditions like heart disease, diabetes, prediabetes, um, and colorectal cancer. Okay, so just some ideas there as to what to watch out for. Basically what happens when you go through menopause, and I'm a guy speaking about this, so I hope I've got everything right, and uh, feel free to comment on the video below if, if, it's, if it's not, uh, but your period stops, okay? So that's the end of the period, so your reproduction system does not happen any longer. You are not able to have children at that point, okay? You can still have the fun of trying to make kids, but you're not gonna get pregnant, okay? The fluctuating hormones lead to emotional and phys physical symptoms, okay? Um, it, it can be stuff like hot flashes and fatigue, um, anxiety, mood swings, anger, um, depression. So just a, a whole bunch of different things that as a woman going through menopause that you may have to deal with and it, it can be a, a big challenge, okay? And there is a lot of weight gain that can happen based on the estrogen levels that drop, okay? So let's go through what we can kind of do and what we can expect. So one of the first things you can do is get on an exercise plan. So normally menopause happens in the 40s and 50s, usually in the 50s, late 40s, early 50s. So what we should be doing, if you're in your 50s, we should be including a weekly exercise program that includes aerobic activity to strengthen the heart, strength training, which is going to help with your bone density, muscle mass, and stretching, which is going to help with your be, being limber. It's also going to help with balance and whatnot. So what this is going to do is going to protect against the weight gain, strengthen the muscles, create some bone density, and um, also help you with your balance because the balance in the 50s, and, and I actually ran into this. I'm only 42 this year, and I actually, my balance was off when I went for my last physical, which is strange because I've been very athletic. I'm a trainer. I'm always on my feet. I'm always doing different exercises with high intensity. And it happens, and a lot of it's attributed to aging, and some of it's attributed to the style of shoes we wear, which is a whole different topic altogether, but it does happen, okay, and it has happened to me. It doesn't matter what kind of shape you're in, those balance challenges can happen, okay? So here's some of the things you can do. You can walk, swim, jog, ride a bike, um, anything that you enjoy doing. Really, that's the key. If you enjoy doing it, you're probably gonna stick to it, and you're gonna do it for a while. Stuff that you wanna throw in there, so here's the way I would set it up. I would set up two to three times per week you're gonna do 
resistance training. So you're going to do free weights, bands, body weight, TRX type stuff, suspension training, all these different types of training that will impact the muscle density, will, will affect your bone density, will help you keep or even gain muscle mass, which is huge because it ramps up the metabolism, makes you stronger, better balance, and whatnot. And then a couple days a week, you should be doing something else where it's just, you know, yoga, Tai Chi, going for your walks, stretching, um, stuff that you really enjoy. But you really two to three times a week, you need to be training either at home, in a facility, somewhere where you have that resistance training, okay? Because that's really going to help. It's going to ramp up your metabolism. It's going to help you peel off any of the possible weight that you put on due to menopause. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So diet plan. As we age, we actually require fewer calories. So in your 50s, you need fewer calories than you did in your 30s. Okay, so aim to eat around, and I'm not a big calorie counting um, guy. I don't like calorie counting. I like portion control, portions the size of your palm. But based on calories, you should be eating around 1,500 calories a day, and that's a really rough estimate. Everybody's a little bit different, okay? But here's the key. Be sure to include lean protein with every meal. So chicken, turkey, fish, meat, eggs, nuts, dairy, stuff like that. So the body does not process protein as well as you age. So you need to get more protein in you because a lot of it will be just going to waste in order to keep the bone density and the muscle strength and all these other pieces and the metabolism firing. You need to have that protein count. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Also, for bone health, women over the age of 50 should be getting at least, sorry, should be getting 1,000 milligrams of calcium each day, okay? Um, you can get calcium from a supplement or you can get it from milk, yogurt, cheese. And another great way to do it is take it with vitamin C. So vitamin, vi vitamin C helps you absorb calcium, okay? So um, that's a great way to do it. Um, if you're overweight or have been gaining weight uh, during this menopause, part or just prior to it, you have an increased risk of insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes during and after menopause, okay? So you want to be really careful with that. Along with the protein, eat a lot of whole grains, fruits, vegetables, healthy fats, and limit the, limit the amount of carbohydrates in your diet, and specifically simple carbohydrates. So the highly processed stuff, white, uh, white rice, white bread, white pasta, uh, limit those and use the whole grain varieties, sprouted grain breads, uh, stuff like that. And this is going to help you, uh, that alone will help you keep the weight off or start reducing weight if menopause is kind of kicking your butt in the weight department, which I've seen happen again and again and again, which is unfortunate. Um, but the, with exercise and a healthy eating plan, you can lose weight even if you're on, you are in menopause, okay? So I hope that all makes sense. Don't give up just because your doctors told you your hormones are out of whack and they may give you hormone therapy treatment, stuff like that. But really, at the end of the day, all that's great, but you all that hormone treatment and all that other stuff that they're gonna do for you is not going to impact you if you haven't got a handle on your lifestyle. And your lifestyle is the only thing that you, yourself, can handle. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So, fantastic, fantastic 50s. So. Fitness and health in your 50s is definitely attainable. So don't let getting old and seeing wrinkles, and I just wrote a blog post about seeing wrinkles in the house, like, oh man, I'm getting old. Don't let that stuff stop you. I mean, I just took on a couple clients and uh, they're in their 60s. And the female client, she had uh, low bone density. So what are we doing? We're getting them to eat lots of uh, high calcium foods, lots of protein, and <clears throat> we're getting them to train with resistance training, lots of TRX stuff, body weight movements, even some weight stuff. And this is, they're in their 60s and they're retired. And there, there's no reason that you can't do it in your 50s, 40s, 50s. I mean, I'm 42 this year and I am in the best shape of my life. Of course, I do it for a living. This is what I do. But at the same time, it's all about choices. So when other people are sitting on the couch, I'm training. When other people are grabbing the bag of chips to eat, I might be grabbing a protein shake or something that is very nutrient dense to eat. Or I don't eat it at all if it's late at night. Just different choices and it's all about the choices that you make. And if you make the right choices, even with menopause, you're going to be able to make an impact, okay? So make exercise and a healthy eating. I hate the word diet, but we we'll use it just because it's a keyword. Um, healthy eating plan as part of your 50s, 40s and 50s and 60s 
and, and really enjoy this time of your life because this is a, supposed to be the time of your life where you're you know getting to do the things that you didn't get to um, enjoying your hobbies and I have found my uh, relatives uh, aunts uncles mom stuff like that they're in their late 60s early 70s and into their 80s and I find the relatives of mine that are in their 80s and still independent and doing things on their own like my aunt Violet she still mows her lawn every week and she's 87 or 88 and th those are the people that are doing the best um, they're engaged in life they're enjoying life still and they're the most healthy and it's just because of their active lifestyle and being independent and if you can keep your independence as long as you possibly can the better okay so even if you have menopause, it's not the end of the world. I know that's easy for me to say because I'm not going to have menopause. I'm not going through the symptoms and I know it can be extremely, extremely challenging because I have clients that go through it. Um, but it's not the end. You can get through it and just make these small lifestyle changes and I think you'll see a, a big difference. And go to your doctor, get everything done on that end, but definitely handle your end as well. Okay. Hope that makes sense, guys. Take care.